Hello and welcome to Geek Ranch. Um, today we are going to talk to you about the Nintendo Switch. That's right. Uh, just announced the other day. Just announced this week. Um, I kind of expected this announcement this week. I'd been messaging you back and forth through Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, we were both uh, getting pretty excited because the little leaks and rumors started to seem a little more, you know, on the nose. And I think a lot of those rumors and leaks can be confirmed. I mean, what do we know about the console so far? Well, uh, that... Like you said, uh, a couple of things over the years that it, it is a hybrid, uh, portable, you know, a traditional console uh, with, you know, a docking station. And um, I don't think any of us were really expecting with this, you know, the sliding and detachable controllers and everything. But uh, that was something that, oh God, a year or more ago it was, was, rumored. was rumored, you know. And the initial patent filings and everything had kind of showed... Uh, a screen with the uh, control sticks coming right out of the screen and everything. So there's there's been quite a bit of disparity uh, with the rumors over the years. But surprisingly, a lot of the things are true. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's really interesting that a lot of the things are true. Um, this is maybe the first g game console I know of that's powered by NVIDIA te technology. Well, there was the... Uh... No, the, the GameCube was ATI as well. Everything was ATI, uh, which the became Xbox. AM... The which... Xbox used a, uh, an NVIDIA chipset. Oh, that's the, right. the tech demo with the uh, the GeForce lady. That's true. So, um, but one of the few. This uses a new NVIDIA Tegra, which is their mobile chip that they use in their Shield. Yep. Um, there have been jokes made that the Nintendo this is the Nintendo Shield. Right. Um, maybe the difference here is, is that we didn't actually see anybody in the video... Um, touching the screen like a shield tablet. Yeah, or they've they've been uh, quiet about it. Uh, of course, they've already been asked by several media outlets, and they're not touching it right now. <laughs> to, to yeah, uh, pun not, pun not intended, but uh, they won't comment on whether or not touchscreen implementation is planned or not. Um, the, I'm hoping not. The rumor the rumor is is that this Tegra chip is based on their Pascal architecture. Yes, which, which is, is their newest. Uh, graphics card architecture, which has been proven so far to be much more powerful than Maxwell that preceded it. Right. So they've got video cards running on the Pascal now. The they just announced the 1050, which the is 1050 like a hundred dollar. 1050 Ti, which starts at 109. I yeah, believe. it's like a hundred bucks. And I haven't seen any numbers on it yet, but I'm sure it's going to be pretty impressive. The, you know, you've got the 1060, 1070, and 1080. Yep. All of which, at their respective price points, provide really impressive performance and benchmarks. Absolutely. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm on board. Right I, I am more more than on board. I, I, I couldn't be more excited. And I, I do try and reel in uh, my, my hype and excitement, you know, but I can't help it. Because the NX has been such a no-show yeah. for the last several years. I mean, what uh, we were supposed to see something last year... Uh, everything has been pushed back. The new Zelda game, Breath of the Wild and everything. People started comparing it to, you know, Twilight Princess with the GameCube and Wii. And I was getting kind of worried that the NS or Nintendo Switch, I'm probably going to go with NS most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah, uh, because it's it's a cool name. Oh boy, am I glad that they dropped the, the Wii moniker. You know, that it they just didn't turn it into the 3 or the Wii Us or something like that. Yeah. That's not to say that Switch isn't a bad name. No, Switch is not, not a great name. No, it's it's not the best. You know, um, like you were saying, I would have uh, liked to see just Nintendo. I would have gone with just Nintendo. That yeah. way, they become ubiquitous again. Exactly, be like they used to like be they used unintentionally. To be. Right. You know, you were a kid, and you could be playing Master System or Genesis, or and, and your parents are like, "You playing that Nintendo?" Exactly. It didn't matter. You were playing Nintendo. Yeah. And they could have just kind of just easily brand. You know, here's the new Nintendo. That's it. I actually think they could have gone with Famicom. I don't know how many of you are uh, familiar with the, the original Nintendo Famicom. Japanese NES. Uh, which was the Japanese version of the NES. But it actually had two controllers on either side of it. Built into the hardwired. Hardwired console. into the actual console. So, like, even going back and being like, hey, this is our new Nintendo Famicom. I actually would have been okay with that. Yeah, I think that would have been pretty neat. Because it, it meant family computer. And Nintendo, at least over the last you know, 15 years, has been really pushing uh, family-centric gaming and uh, including everybody, you know, having fun with friends and family. I think it would have played I, really well. I think that's an interesting point because th this whole teaser trailer is all attractive millennials in apartments they can't afford. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and, and you don't see families, uh, really? I mean, Okay, well, not really. But. Yeah, you don't see any like children or any of that stuff. Yeah. They're definitely <laughs> targeting the millennial hipster crowd, which which is fine. But I I think 
Uh, I mean, Nintendo honestly didn't need to target us. No. The, the people that grew up with the NES, they didn't need to target us at all because they knew that we would see what this thing is doing and be absolutely stoked, which I am. Absolutely. Uh, another thing in the uh, the uh, Nintendo Switch reveal video that I thought was interesting is uh, uh, one gentleman taking his uh, super awesome Nintendo Switch to the airport and seeing uh, an attractive young lady who's also enjoying Zelda um, at the airport, and they begin talking and probably father children together later. Um, because that's a thing that happens in real life. You just ha- happen to be going to the airport, and here's here's a nice looking lady that's uh, playing video games. Perhaps I should strike up a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's uh, let's go through some of the frames from the video and okay. kind of talk about what we're looking at. Right on. So the first thing we're going to look at is their logo, which is this. Yeah, and boy, uh, has that been parodied a lot. You know, uh, with with. The controllers on the side. This this mimics the uh, the oh, what are they calling it? The Joy-Con. Yeah, the controllers on the side are called the Joy Cons. Yeah, and it, it looks like a confused puppy. And <laughs> there's been a lot of pictures drawn. <laughs> I've seen those pictures. Actually, I think it looks like the yin and yang symbol. It does, and I'm sure that was intentional. Yeah. The, the resemblance there. I like the logo. I like that it's not a U anymore. You know, I like that it's, again, I can't tell you how glad I am that we aren't having the word we associated with this anymore. For sure. So, uh, it's simple, you know, it's it's red and white, it's Nintendo, so I like it. Yeah, I, I think they'll rebrand it in Mexico as the Nintendo Chancla. Switch. <laughs> there it is. It took a second, but there it is. Go out and get a Switch, or you're going to get Chancleta chucked at your head. Exactly. So, d- just... You know, different cultures, same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rebranding like for your country of target is, yeah, is very that's important. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So let's take a look at the hardware. This okay. is it. This is their yeah. promotional and, image and of the this, hardware. Okay, there's there's your confused puppy face. Uh, and the dock, of course, for when you're playing it on your TV, which I think is is just oh, super sleek and, and really cool looking. You know, the device slides right into it. It just looks... Just Nintendo's quality, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, their hardware over the years has always been stellar. So yeah, let's talk about what you're looking at here, right? So you've got the dock with the screen, so that sure. you can play this on your big screen TV. You can yep. see Zelda Breath of the Wild back there in the sure. background. Um, this thing that you see in the front, that's the controller. The two gray parts on the side Pop slide right off. off of that and slide onto the tablet yes. on the side. And then you just, you, I, I love how they did it in the video. You slide it down on the sides, pick the thing up. And you go and you do what you're going to do wherever. And you've got portable on-the-go action yes. right there with a beautiful looking screen, too. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Um, now, instead of having a D-pad like most stuff does, it's got buttons. Yeah, it's got like uh, on the 64 controller, actually. Remember like the, the C-sticks, buttons, yeah. You know? Which uh, is, is cool. Um, I don't know how that's going to be with like traditional fighting games. You know, because the, the sweeping motions with your traditional Nintendo Plus sign uh, yep. D-pad. I honestly don't think that's going to be an issue because when they put out uh, a Smash Brothers game on this console, which will happen, uh, it will either have its dedicated controller or they will release a dongle that will let you use the GameCube controller, which is the favored way of playing uh, Smash Brothers. So Yeah, so you can also see on here, I, the reason that they have the buttons as opposed to the D-pad it's worth noting is those controllers can actually be separated and then ah, one player right. can use one and one player can use the other. I knew this. And they're relatively identical. Yes. Um, I mean, they're off a little bit, so my OCD is going to have a problem. Um, and then you have your, on the bottom right, under the right stick, you have a home button. Mm-hmm. We don't know what, on the bottom left, what that button is yeah, yet. Yeah, people have speculated it's a share slash like a share. stream yeah, button. Yeah, like, just like, just like the, um, just like the current PlayStation and xbox they have the share button so it's possible that it will do sharing um nintendo has announced a great list of developer partners right i was really excited to see this because uh, anybody that's been a nintendo fan uh for any length of time in the last 15 years knows that they really lack in third-party support Uh, initially they come out of the gate with a new console announcement um promising you know all of this collaboration with third-party developers and game publishers, and it, and it almost always falls through. Or we see shovelware, as in the case with the Wii. Um, this list is really exciting because we see some heavy hitters on it. Uh, 505 Games, Activision, Bethesda, I don't even need to say anything Atlas. there. Atlas, big RPG uh, Bandai developer Namco. right there. Uh, Capcom, you know, um, 
not really doing, you know, like what they used to, but I, yeah. I hope they turn their stuff around pretty soon. You got EA? Square Enix. Okay. Square Enix? Uh, this thing, ha- having Square Enix, you know, behind it, hopefully making RPGs for it or porting RPGs for it is going to be a huge boon. Now, I want to point out something, and a lot of people have said this may not be a touchscreen because you don't see anybody in the trailer t- yeah. doing the touchscreen. However, touch on their list of partners here, we see DNA, who make touchscreen, tablet, and phone games they that they've partnered with for, like, the new Mario Run That's game. That's right. So I think that we're going to find out that that screen is touchable. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, it's neither here or there for me. I don't ever use the touch functionality on the Wii U mm-hmm. unless the game forces me to. So I can take it or leave it. Um, I think it's worth noting that, uh, you know, while they released this list of developers, the developers who have been contacted by the media have have been really weird about their responses they 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 basically wish nintendo luck as opposed to confirming that they're actually working on stuff yeah um i mean like we're going to show here you here next here's skyrim on the go yes which was was a, was a big uh, focal point of the reveal video and the first thing a lot of people myself included noticed yeah i mean i noticed skyrim immediately that was my yes. dream with the ps vita yeah was having an open world game like that on right. the go um, now that said, Bethesda has issued a statement that says we can't confirm that Skyrim's on the Nintendo on the Nintendo Switch, which is crazy because it's such a focus of this video. Right. And um, looking back, Nintendo has before uh, during reveal videos shown screenshots or video uh, on their hardware that ended up not coming to that specific hardware. I hope, really hope that that's not the case here because Bethesda. Um, really doesn't seem like the type of company that would just allow the use, you know, of, of footage of their game and, and not have anything. I honestly think that they just are, are just kind of holding their cards close to their chest for yeah, now. You absolutely. Know? And the report that I saw uh, about Bethesda not, you know, the comment and everything was delivered by Kotaku. Um, I don't know how amicable... <laughs> the uh, Kotaku and uh, Bethesda relationship is right now. But Anymore. <laughs> it has been uh, very rocky, rocky in the past. In the past uh, for sure. Yeah, the, the website has really uh, not given a lot of reason to trust uh, to the Bethesda a lot in the future. So they might not have wanted to deliver anything to them because that was who asked the question. That was who delivered the answer was Kotaku. So I'm going to wait and see what Bethesda has to say to the general public. Um, so one of the things that we know for sure about it is that this is a cartridge-based system. You can see mm. the cartridge. Something makes me uh, pretty happy. Um, yeah, I mean, it makes me happy and it also makes me nervous. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit both ways on it right now. Um, rumor has it that Nintendo has told developers to use 32 gigabyte cartridges. Now, whether or not this system supports higher, uh, higher storage cartridges or not, like 64 gigabytes, which is what I actually expected, remains to be seen. Yeah. Um, this is worrisome for me because right now, um, a lot of games and stuff, when you download them, you're, you're talking 60 and 70 gigabytes. Sure. So if you're not at least on a 64 gig cartridge, that hints to me that it, the possibility exists that once again, Nintendo is going to have the absolute lesser version of a game. Yeah, I, I really hope that's not the case. Uh, we don't know anything as far as storage on the device itself. Yep. Um, I really can't imagine it's going to be too spectacular in such a small profile, but I, I would hope for 500 gigabytes. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, because uh, the, the the Xbox One and the PS4 now are into terabyte territory with, mm-hmm. their, with their premium console uh, offerings that they have right now. 500 uh, gigabytes seem to be the standard when they launched. Yeah, I, and I mean, we're just talking cartridges. We're not even talking about internal storage, right? Oh, I'm so talking like, about internal storage. But what about, yeah, c- come to think of it, what about internal storage? We what don't kind know of in- anything about it yet. Yeah, I mean, so, we know that people are going to buy a lot of, we're going to buy a lot of content digitally. So what's that internal yes, storage for your Yeah, and, and it's nothing new, you, Nintendo. I mean, the Wii had paltry storage. Uh, the Wii U's, in comparison, was really not that great. 32, wasn't it 32 gigabytes? Yeah. Yeah, I believe mine, the, the black unit, is, is 32 gigabytes. So another issue is that uh, day one patches, this is very much a thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, before games launch, there are usually, I just I just heard about, I can't remember what game it was, had a 10 gigabyte patch right out the gate. 
You know, I think that that's going to guarantee that stuff that's on cartridge is going to be ready to go. I really hope so. Um, I don't know how many developers are going to uh, subscribe to that because I think uh, as the industry, a lot of developers have come to rely on the ability to patch a title the day that it launches or even prior. Um, speaking of storage media, another problem that we might have uh, with the chosen storage media, I mean, it's chosen because it's going to give better battery life than having a spinning disc inside of this Absolutely. console. Absolutely, there's no moving parts. But but a problem we may run into is the, the popularity of video game rental sites uh, like Redbox, right? Like Redbox probably doesn't have any kind of solution to carry this card. Probably not. Um, so how is that going to work? How how will Redbox be able to carry these types of games? They might. Uh, I th- I really think it'll depend on how popular it is. I know that they won't do it initially because they will have to change uh, certain things either in their packaging or the machines themselves. But to help, but to help the system itself sell. Yeah. I, I feel like a rental base is going to be a necessity. Yeah, it's it's still pretty big. I mean, when you think about how digital everything is today, the fact that. Uh, video game rental on modern consoles is still an option is is says a lot well yeah i mean you say say you go to the store say your mom goes to the store to buy you this new console right and they stop at the red box just to see what's available before yep. they go in maybe that's the deciding factor they're like maybe well i can is. i can rent him ps4 games but i can't rent him that's definitely I, very possible yeah you know and just like when when we were kids absolutely you know you have a video game console maybe came with a game but you can rent stuff so that's something I hope they've considered, but at the same time, I'm really excited that they're using static media uh, because there are no moving parts. Uh, you got less power draw, uh, faster access speeds, um, mm-hmm. which with you know a, a lot of the games and, and content now being downloadable um, isn't as much of a deal. isn't really as much of a deal. But I, I still really like just having a card with the faster access speeds. Um, the, the lower profile, you know, it's just got a smaller footprint, you know. Uh, that being said, it'd be kind of easier to lose, yeah. but I've never really had a problem with that. Yep. Um, so let's talk about the joysticks themselves. Um, as you can see, like I said, men- mentioned earlier, they slide onto the side mm-hmm. of the tablet. Very cool stuff. Um, they seem to have buttons maybe uh, between the tablet yeah. where it slides. It looks like there might be L buttons uh, there for whenever you're playing well, one they're, player, Well, they're, they're over the shoulder, so you're definitely going to have a button well, in one of your palms. Well, you when you're holding them like that, right, you'll definitely sure. have... But, oh, okay, I see what you're talking on, about. On the flat side, I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, so that where your fingers would naturally rest? Yeah, whenever you're so. playing two-player. And um, this is really interesting because, uh, like in the reveal video, they showed uh, people playing uh, local multiplayer uh, and holding, there you go, uh, holding the, uh, the controller sideways. And yes, it's small, but damn, if that isn't cool. Yeah. I mean, it's it still looks comfortable to me. Uh, if you play the GBA or the GBA SP or, I mean, if you were lucky enough to play the GB uh, Micro. Mm-hmm. Remember the, the Game Boy Advance Micro? micro. Yeah, oh, I wish I could have got my hands on one of those. But it's not a problem. It doesn't look uncomfortable to me at all. The controllers look like they're made very well. I, I can't remember a uh, Nintendo first party made uh, peripheral or hardware that hasn't been fantastic quality so yeah. these things are going to feel pretty good they're going to work really well and i'm sure all the buttons and everything will feel real nice but and you see the guy on the right it looks like he's touching some it does both of them do yeah. actually and um, this this was really neat in the video uh split screen you know you've got this i'm, I'm gonna say it's about seven inch screen yeah, that's 7. what 1. it seems like um and you you here's again with the mobility thing you know you're going somewhere uh, you and your buddy are in the back seat. You can split screen this thing and play. I mean, how many times have you heard people, you know, um, missing couch co-op, you know, and, and playing on the same screen and stuff like that? This is going to be a pretty big deal. I, I think, think something interesting about this scene in the video that nobody's really talking about is that it shows off an accessory that nobody really talks about. But you see that yeah, arm. Yeah, the boom. Yeah, you sure. see the arm. I was wondering about that. Coming out from between the two seats yeah. so that, I don't know, kids in the back seat can have it between the right. two. And I wondered if, and this, if this is play just stuff on the go. something that Nintendo put in that it were, is like a universal tablet holder. Mm-hmm. Or is this something that they're going to offer directly from Nintendo themselves. Yeah, the other question is, if you have two people playing and they're in the back of a car and they want to use headphones, how does that work? Well, um, I'm sure that the the device will have Bluetooth capability of some sort, unless they're using uh, some proprietary wireless technology uh, to the controllers because nothing's hardwired to the thing. Yeah, the other thing about this too is you can't use a wired headset because it plugs into the top and the way that thing slid in, it would actually block the port. But... 
Um, I'm hoping, and this it seems a little unlike Nintendo, but I'm hoping that it will offer Bluetooth support, or if not, if they're going to go with like a proprietary wireless communication technology, which I don't know, that seems pretty pretty yeah, far for the course of, for Nintendo. Yeah. That they release their own headset for you sure. You know, because I'm going to be honest, I'll buy it because it would work for with the thing, and it'll probably look pretty cool too. Absolutely. <laughs> so. um, the other thing that they kind of show off is that it's got a kickstand. Yeah, and that's neat too. I, I mean, I've I've got uh, tablets at home. I've got my phone, and several times, you know, I've been in a situation where I kind of wish I could prop the thing up, and either watch something on it or, or or play games on it, you know. And I like that you'll be able to just take the thing off the dock. Someone wants to watch TV, whatever, and you put it down, and you kind of get to relax where you are and, and play, play it. Whatever. Yeah. But um, I also, with the Wii U, too, I don't really mind holding it to my face, but your arms get tired. You know, put the thing on the kickstand and just a lot of cool features on this thing. For sure. I'm glad that they went with a more modern and simple design, something that doesn't look so Fisher-Price, right? Because yes. the Wii U looks very Fisher-Price. Well, it does. You know, it's it's really rounded. It's it's pretty plasticky. It's it's glossy. I mean, that was kind of the thing for a while. Um, but I, I do really like the design. Um, I love black it, with tech, you know, the PS4 and the Xbox One, I'm, I'm glad that there's kind of sticking in that direction, you know. Everything looks really nice and sturdy, you know. I mean, the unit looks like it has some good mm -hmm. substantial weight to it without being cumbersome. Yep, I think it looks great. Um, but anyway, I, that's what we've got to talk about the uh, Nintendo Switch. Do you have any final thoughts? Um, no, other than just barely contained uh, fanboy-level excitement. So March seventeenth uh, for me can't come soon. March two thousand seventeen. Oh, not an actual date. Oh, okay. It was March two thousand seventeen. Uh, all right. Well, I don't care when. In March twenty seventeen, I'm glad it's as close as it is, and uh, yeah, we'll have you know we'll talk about more as soon as anything comes out. You know, we'll uh, we'll put up a video, have our thoughts on it. And this is the kind of content you're going to get from Geek Ranch in the future. We're just going to kind of, we're, we're going to fan out, right? We're going to geek out. We're, yes. We're not industry experts. We're just a couple of right. Nintendo that's and, what we and do anyways. game fans. And yeah. we don't, we, we each have our hardware preferences, but we're not uh, opposed to any other har hardware. I mean, I've got, you know, the PS4 and the Xbox One sitting here. I didn't buy a Wii because I, I or Wii U because I didn't uh, really see the the point of it but i i do have my gamecube and nintendo 64 and all yeah. that other stuff well i i did buy a wii u because mm -hmm. uh i am a consumer nintendo whore yeah so you're a whore well i just the the, the screen and everything you know and, and the the play yeah. in your house and with the ns they've kind of taken that to where just go anywhere yeah you know? um so. it just never had the killer app for me i'm really glad to see that um nintendo switch may or may not have skyrim which means it yeah. could or could not have Fallout 4. I yeah, mean, oh man, that's that's For me, sweet. playing those big open games and long games <sighs> works so much better when I can do it on the go. I agree. So I, I really agree because some, you can't dedicate you know all of your, your media time at home just to one big, grand, sprawling game. Yep. Uh, being able to, to take it with you when you're going to be idle anyways is Taking a, lunch a break fantasy come true, hopefully. And stuff. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, that's what we got for you. Um, thank you for tuning in to Geek Ranch. We hope that you enjoyed our, our discussion about the Nintendo Switch. And hopefully uh, we'll be back again with more news about it pretty soon. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. See you later.